about the 2020 truck was we have a couple examples over here um, so some pretty interesting new news for the 20 model year starting on the outside uh, all new grills new fascia new headlamps so increased output in the leds as this truck is equipped with um, all except for our drw wheels and our base xl wheels are new so we have about nine new wheels that also go along with it in addition to some new colors uh, moving on to the interior lariat and uh, Platinum have some new finishes as well as some new colors. And then the limited interior has been very heavily refreshed for 2020. So a Highland tan color, Miko suede headliner, uh, some new finishes as well. And overall, just a very nice like theme and fit within the, the limited truck. So moving on to some technology. Technology has been a big part of our story for 20 model year. We now have Pro Trailer Backup Assist, feature you guys might be very well aware of on both F-150 as well as Expedition, that will be uh, available on 2020 Super Duties. And now it will work for the first time in any application with uh, conventional tow, fifth wheel, or gooseneck applications. And trailer reverse guidance will also work with conventional fifth wheel and gooseneck applications as well. Uh, a couple other details in terms of technology for 2020, we every single Super Duty comes with an embedded modem standard. So that allows you to lock and lock, remote start your truck just using your cell phone. It also provides you with Wi-Fi hotspot for up to 10 devices 50 feet around the truck. And then finally, we brought some DAT features and made them standard XLT and above. So every XLT and up Super Duty will come with blind spot monitor, uh, auto emergency braking, automatic high beams, uh, and some others. And then finally, some new packages for 2020 and some that we're continuing for 2019 as well. This truck is an example of both. So continued from 2019, it's a Lariat Sport package, which gives you a blacked out grill, black wheels, black mirror cap. Um, and for the first time on an American Ford, a black Ford Oval. And then also on this truck is the Tremor off-road package. So a functional package that helps um, with some of the off-road capability of our already capable Super Duty truck, namely 35 inch maximum traction tires, uh, larger off-road tune shock absorbers, off-road running boards, and a host of other features, which you guys will uh, become familiar with at the off-road course tomorrow. So we're in the first truck of the day is a 2020 uh, Ford Super Duty F350 with the Tremor off-road package. This particular one has the 7.3 liter gasoline engine. And so we've been in this truck now for about 20 minutes. And so uh, the first impressions, this is a this is a King Ranch interior, by the way. So it's got the soft leather interior and the Western uh, theme to it. And um, the truck interior for being an off-road package is very, very quiet. Even with the off-road tires, there's a uh, very soft buzz you might be able to hear it in the background but um, overall the cabin is really really quiet very roomy um, the steering feels a little bit over boosted it's a um, it's a hydraulic steering system but it has some electric assistance that uh, boosts it depending on whether you are in a uh, parking lot situation or a low speed maneuverability situation or whether or not you're on the highway. At low speeds, it feels a little bit overboosted to me, a little bit unnatural, but um, it's a lot of people are probably going to appreciate it because it is a big truck and um, you know, turning large tires on pavement can be can be an effort if it's if you don't have some boost. But for me personally, it's a little bit overboosted, but not a big deal. The um, the brakes feel good. I've driven some heavy duty trucks uh, recently that. Um, brakes just didn't feel very confident and inspiring and now that we have this one on the road so far the brakes have a very good feel we haven't had to do any real kind of a panic stop or anything like that but they have good travel they um, uh, they're pretty progressive and, and predictable and so so far everything feels good nice steering wheel good padding got some good welts here on uh, on the 10 and 2 position and um, so far, a very comfortable truck. So now we're on some pretty open road out here in the desert, and um, the road is obviously not as smooth as the highway. But we're still getting some uh, very quiet interior, 
feedback and uh, the vehicle rides pretty smoothly considering what it's designed for. Got some railroad crossings coming up here. Not too bad. I mean, I've been in a lot of heavy duty trucks earlier on that, um, you know, you'd, you'd feel that in your back. Uh, but this, this truck is really very pleasant to drive for a long distance. And with this 7.3, we're gonna see how the power is. We're doing 60 miles an hour. Let's go up to about 70 and see what that takes. So it pulls pretty strong. That's actually 80 miles an hour. That is a very strong V8. Um, so I don't think anybody that uh, chooses the 7.3 liter V8 uh, gasoline engine is going to be disappointed. I guess we're going to be going about eight miles on uh, a dirt road. And this isn't really a bad dirt road. Um, an 18 wheeler just came the other direction. But um, you can definitely uh, feel a little bit of washboard. But it, this is not a jolting ride by any means. It's not the roughest road in the world again, but um, the ride feels pretty smooth. And if you, if I stop talking here for a second, you can even hear how quiet it is. And the only noise that you're getting is from these bottles, really. Very little shake and rattle for uh, going 50 miles an hour across a, uh, a gravel road. And, and in reality, this is the most off-roading uh, most customers are going to do. They're going to do a real lot of hardcore off-roading. But we are heading to an off-road course that Ford has set up for us. And so uh, then we'll actually be putting this tremor package uh, through its paces. We've already been on about 20 miles of dirt road and we're passing kind of a construction zone over here. So we're definitely out in the boonies right now. And uh, Ford obviously has plenty of room to put a good off-road course together. And we've heard good things so far about this. I know um, that my subscribers, the people that watch this channel, are more interested in the RV aspect of things. But let's face it, when you're RVing, you're going to be going off-road sometimes, so I think it's an important thing to talk about. The new Ford Build 10-speed automatic has five drive modes, plus a rock crawling mode when you get the tremor package. These make it easy for novice off-roaders to navigate difficult terrain by pushing a button at the end of the shift selector. One of the most challenging parts of the course was what could only be described as a dirt wall, but the Ford guys made it look easy in the F-350 tremor. Now it was our turn. We're gonna go kind of at a moderate speed, but we're gonna kind of walk the truck up. And right. I'm gonna tell you step in, step in, step in, hold it. And if I teach step in more, I want you to keep going into pedal. Mm -hmm. the, the idea is that we're gonna go up. We may have a little bit of wheel spin. Uh, just but, hold steady. Yeah, but as long as it's grabbing and we're moving, we wanna keep going. Gotcha. Um, you can see by my angle of my head right now, I have to look like this to see up this hill, so. All right, so we're ready to go, right? Sure, we're ready. You think it's a good idea to double foot it here? Uh, no, you should. We should be fine. Okay. Just, All right. Just go. All right, here we go. More. Keep going. That was pretty easy, <laughs> I gotta say. Throughout the rest of the course were a variety of other challenges, including a twist ditch, which puts suspension articulation to the test, a water feature, which demonstrated the Tremor's 30 inches of water fording capability, lots of muddy roads, and a high-speed mud pit, which really was just for fun. The Tremors Trail Control System, forward-facing camera view, and 360-degree bird's eye view take the guesswork out of difficult terrain. I'm not touching the brake or the gas. All we're doing is steering. And are we 
turning. Turn to the right. To the right. Yeah. Okay. Can't see very well out my window now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, go a little bit to the left. Okay. Now remember, while we're doing this, we still have wet tires. Mm-hmm. Right. We're rock, rock, one up a hill with wet tires. And the Again, truck is driving for you. Yep. I don't have my foot on the throttle at all. For more ambitious off-roaders, the Tremor is even prepped for a 12,000-pound worn winch, which can be installed by the dealer. Hi, I'm David Ives. I'm a diesel technical leader at Ford Motor Company here with our uh, third generation Power Stroke Diesel. Awesome. And we were talking a little bit earlier and you said there are four points that were really important about this new Power Stroke. Can we go through those real quick? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, Chris. So first of all, this is diesel. So we're going to talk diesel fuel system first. So okay. We have a, uh, previously we had a 2,000 bar or 30,000 pound uh, operating system. Mm -hmm. And we've increased that to 38,000 pounds or about 2,500 bar. So it's okay. about a 25% increase in uh, operating pressure. And that operating pressure uh, allows us to inject the fuel faster at full power to make more power and torque. Okay. And also uh, better atomize the fuel for improved efficiency at uh, driving speeds and also uh, better tuning for emissions. Okay. So those are the main advantages of the fuel system? Yes. Okay. Yes. And so uh, moving on from fuel, the next for, for combustion, you have to have air. And to drive air into this engine, we have a new turbocharger. OK. And that turbocharger fe features uh, a new uh, turbine stage that has uh, what we call a double axle design for the vane control system. OK. And previously, we had an axle on one side and a vane tab on the other. This double axle design better supports the vanes. And that, that better support allows for tighter vein side clearances, which improve the efficiency of the turbocharger. Okay. And the way it does that is because of that extra support, we're able to run tighter clearances uh, in the housing. And then more of the gas goes through between the veins instead of around the veins, improving the efficiency of the turbocharger. So this turns okay. into improved fuel consumption and more torque and power for the customer. Okay, and we talked about now that's also got a that's a ball bearing. Yes, turbocharger it, it from Garrett. Feature, uh, it does feature ball bearings this time for again for improved efficiency. Uh, the outgoing product had a journal bearing. Journal uh, bearing turbo. Okay. What's next? Next up, we have uh, improved structures. To make all this torque and power, we had to upgrade the structure on the block and the uh, cylinder head, and then maybe most importantly, we uh, have now incorporated steel pistons. Now that part's really interesting to me. I'd, I'd love to know the reasoning behind that. Well, we needed steel for, uh, uh, we sought out steel for the imp improved strength, and steel being uh, much less dense than aluminum, we're able to make the design more compact. So the sides of the piston or the skirts are smaller, mm -hmm. which allows for less sliding friction as the piston's moving up and down the bore. Okay. And also being smaller, the, uh, that allows for the connecting rod to be a little bit longer, so the thrust forces along the side of the bore are less, again, improving friction. Okay. So that turns into, again, fuel consumption benefits for the customer with that reduced friction. And the improved strength uh, in combination with the cylinder head upgrade and the uh, cylinder block upgrade allow us to run at higher operating pressures, which allows for the increase in torque and power. Okay. That makes sense. Then lastly, the fourth item we have uh, incorporated is something called a variable displacement oil pump, which I'm sure a lot of your uh, readers know about already. We have them in lots of our gasoline engines, and we've now incorporated it on the uh, Power Stroke as well. Mm -hmm. What that allows is uh, when the truck's working hard, like when we're pulling up these uh, up this hill here, mm -hmm. uh, that allows for us to generate more oil pressure to generate uh, more traction for the engine where it's working hard. And then when we're coming back down the hill and not much as, as much oil pressure is required, sure. we back off a little bit and deliver better fuel consumption for the customer. Mm -hmm. okay. So these are the four these are the four major upgrades that we've done, uh, delivering more torque, more power, better fuel economy, <laughs> and uh, the same reliability and durability our customers have come to expect for this third generation Power Stroke. And I, and I know that we don't, the, the EPA doesn't require you to have fuel economy numbers for heavy duty trucks, but you're, you're thinking on average, you should see about a one a mile per gallon improvement? Yeah, depending on how the, the customer uses the truck, uh, a typical customer, would, I would expect to see about a one mile per gallon improvement. 
that's decent, especially if somebody drives a lot. Yep, yeah, it's uh, all about cost of operation. We know that's important to our customers. That's part of what we wanted to deliver. Another thing we're talking about were some of the other small improvements to the truck itself. Yeah, so one of the things we've done is we've improved the uh, air induction system that feeds air into the engine. Mm -hmm. We now have moved the battery rearward here and have pulled the air cleaner air box forward, allowing for a bigger uh, air cleaner okay. and lower pressure drop across it. And mm -hmm. then more, even more importantly, when you're towing in hot weather, these ducts are positioned forward enough now, one here above and one here behind the grill, such that you don't get as much rise over ambient. In other words, there's not as much hot air that gets into the engine. Cooler okay. combustion air leads to more horsepower when towing heavy loads. Okay. So that's another subtle but yet important improvement that we've uh, offered here on the third generation Power Stroke. So what are we going to do here before we start towing? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to we're going to switch to uh, tow haul mode. I think we can do that by touching this button right here. So now this is regular drive mode. Right. And I'm going to switch now over to tow, tow haul, haul mode. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we'll do most of the trip in tow haul mode. This gives you a better shift schedule for handling with a trailer. It'll it'll run the RPM up farther before it shifts for just about any pedal position. Okay. Also, when you're going downhill, it'll it'll uh, increase the engine speed to help slow the vehicle down as you're going down grades. Okay. And then we're also going to uh, incorporate this engine braking button here. Great. So there's three modes for this button. Three uh, now. Yeah. Has there always been three? No, we've had three all along, but a lot of people don't know about the three modes, and that's, so that's mm -hmm. something I want to talk about a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. So the first, uh, the first mode here is uh, just engine braking on, so it's giving you as much braking as it possibly can when your foot's off the accelerator, and if you pump the brakes once or twice, it'll activate full on. Okay. Okay, as, give you as much braking power as you can. Right. And then if we hit it again, then you get automatic engine braking. And the difference is in automatic engine braking, it tries to maintain speed that you're going. So if you're going down a hill at 60 mile an hour, it'll apply the engine brake as needed to get you to uh, that set point speed of 60 mile an hour. Okay. It won't just apply the maximum that it can. Sure. So the automatic engine braking uh, is what a lot of the customers or a lot of our customers prefer because it maintains a certain speed. And you don't but have to think about it. You don't have to think about it. With uh, with full on engine braking, you're going to get the full capability of what the brake can deliver, and that may slow you down more than you want, uh, or it may not. Mm -hmm. But uh, it does give you the maximum, so we like to offer our customers that choice. Okay, and I can see that's why you've chosen this grade up ahead, because it looks like it's a pretty steep upgrade. Yeah, it's a six percent grade once you get it. Uh, once you make the turn up there, I don't know if the camera can see that yet, but uh, yeah. But uh, up at there, once you make the turn, you're on about a six percent grade all the way up. There. And that's pretty pretty typically the most you're going to see yeah, in most. Yeah, that's a standard in the uh, standard in the U.S. for commercial trucks, as they try not to put them on anything steeper than six. Right. There's some little sections that are steeper than that, but not for very long. Okay, and and with the with the exhaust braking, that's done through the turbocharger, is it not? Right, yeah. What we're doing there is with the fuel off, okay, engine's not uh, making torque, mm -hmm. fuel off, we clamp down on the vanes to make the tougher for the engine to pump air through it. And uh, that creates a pumping loss, which makes the engine harder to turn, and that slows the vehicle down. Okay. All right, so, um, so we're ready to go? Yep. And this, this trailer is nothing for this truck. Yeah, I think as uh, anywhere you feel like it, I think if you step down on the pedal and you'll feel that the truck uh, accelerates just fine. Yeah, it's, this is that trailer is probably thirteen thousand pounds. I think it's somewhere between twelve and a half and thirteen, yeah. if I was to guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you're right. It's about your so, standard uh, medium size. And this truck is probably where are we at on tow, tow rating weight, with this truck? Uh, tow rating, tow rating for this truck. Well, this is an F three fifty dually. Right. So it's rated to tow. Uh, it's rated to tow. Uh, I think max gross combined on these is uh, just just above forty thousand pounds. The model we were towing was actually the Grand Design two hundred and ninety BH, which is just over thirty four feet long and has a gross vehicle weight rating of ten thousand one hundred ninety five pounds. Clearly, an F three hundred and fifty dually with the six point seven liter Power Stroke is overkill for a trailer like this. But in reality, it's overkill for any fifth wheel trailer you're likely to find. The truck had no problem pulling this 6% grade in 6th gear at a little over 1500 RPM. Right now we're standing with Don Mattern, who's a pro trailer backup assist supervisor. 
and we're going to talk a little bit about Pro Trailer Backup Assist, which is available now in Super Duty for the first time, and also for the first time works with a fifth wheel trailer. So walk us through how that works. All right, so we didn't, we weren't able to use an image-based concept for trailer angle detection on the fifth wheel. Which was but, like that sticker that went on the A-frame, right? right? There wasn't mm -hmm. a surface, it's not consistent right. between different trailers, there's all kinds of front ends, so we had to come up with a system. What we decided to do was put a yaw rate sensor on the trailer. It's housed in this plastic housing, and there's a few simple instructions to get this mounted to your trailer. Right? If you have a flat vertical surface, right, it has to be on a vertical surface. Mm. It has to have those arrows pointing up. To mount it on this trailer, there's an adhesive backing on the back plate there. You just mm -hmm. take peel off the, the, the top cover on the adhesive tape, stick it on, you're good to go. Now that kit comes included with your fifth wheel prep package. Okay. You also get the connections inside the box for that connection uh, for that sensor, right? Inside the power box there? Inside the power box. So the top connection is mm -hmm. your normal seven pin connector for your trailer wiring, okay. brakes, and lighting. Right. The bottom connection is a 12 pin connector. Two of the pins are used for our yaw rate sensor. Okay. Also connects the other trailer technology we have. If you want the camera system, you can use those pins as well as the trailer TPMS. So our trailer okay. technology goes through that connection. So a little bit about how it works. Mm -hmm. So uh, if the yaw rate, we know about the truck because there's inertial sensors for like stability control. So sure. you know what, how the, the truck's yawing. We know mm -hmm. the wheelbase of, of the truck. Mm -hmm. Once we know the yaw rate of the trailer, we can determine the trailer, we can estimate a trailer length based on a dynamic drive. Mm -hmm. If you're in setup for TBA, our trailer backup assist, mm -hmm. it'll guide you through what you have to do. If you just have the sensor plugged in and you're driving, it'll learn the system. It doesn't take all that much. It's a three or four minute drive. You just got to make a couple turns and drive straight. Another interesting feature of the Pro Trailer Backup Assist system is the electric over hydraulic power steering, which uses a motor and controller to modify the torque going into the hydraulic system. This way, steering effort can be changed as needed. Um, one of the other advantages is we can do features with that system. So um, a couple of features we've already put on the system is pull drift compensation. So if you're getting a constant side wind and having to fight against it, oh yeah, we can do a torque offset because we're looking at yaw rate and we're saying, well, the tr truck's not turning, but he's putting in a constant effort. We can put an offset in and say, oh, then he doesn't have to fight our road crown. You don't have to fight against it all the time. It'll learn. And then if that road crown changes and the wind stops, it'll quickly learn and adjust and say, oh, I don't need to put that offset in anymore. Wow. So you said the part that is existing on this power assisted is the recirculating ball gear way down there with the that's hydraulic the part tubes that's running into it. No, that's the old part. That's the old part. Okay. All right. And the new silver part is the motor and controller that we added to the system. So now we're going to actually use this system. Is it still activated now that we put it in park or do we have yeah, to? Yeah, all you got to do is shift back into reverse and it'll go active again. And then I'm just going to steer with this knob from here right. on. My advice on using the knob is slow turn and hold and then see how the trailer reacts and adjust the position based on how the trailer's reacting. So just, now I'm turning it the way I want it to go correct. in the mirror, correct? Right. So I'm just, do I have to let off the brake completely? Yeah. Well, I mean, you modulate the brakes. We're going on a little downhill grade, so you really don't have to hit the throttle. You just All modulate right, so the brakes to control the speed. And we're starting to turn and you can see the steering wheel doing its own thing, which is really pretty weird to experience and we're staying out of the yellow so far and looks like we're doing pretty good following those cones yeah yeah no it's looking good almost like i've done this before yeah, that kind of looks like it yeah. now the key is are you going to know when to let go of the knob and let it start straightening it out well i don't know as it turns out, it's not quite as easy as it looks. While it is easier and faster to learn than traditional backing methods, there is still a learning curve involved, and this will vary depending on the size of the trailer and the driver's experience. So whether you enjoy driving off-road, or plan to do most of your towing on the highway, the 2020 Super Duty has the power and the technology you need to accomplish almost any task with ease.